especially true if you've come from a background in martial arts where you think you have some skills. I felt like I knew a lot about how to defend myself, right? And got on the mat with uh, Chris Howder. Uh, <laughs> and it was, like, it was like wrestling with a Martian. It was just this most surreal uh, experience of being, of making a 100% effort to survive and failing every 30 seconds or minute and a half and just then being resurrected by just the sheer fact that he decided not to kill me. There's not a lot of luck in grappling. Zero. Yeah. There's zero luck. And that's what's amazing about it. It's, I mean, no one ever says you got a, a lucky triangle. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you, yeah. you, you can't get yeah. a lucky triangle. That's a fucking complex move to set up. You have to cut angles. You have to secure it. You have to make sure it's not over the foot. It's over the ankle. There's a lot of, lot of variables involved. Anybody can learn it. All you have to do is just show up to your local jiu-jitsu school and just watch. Just go and just watch for a couple times. It's free. You don't have to commit to it. Just tell the guy you want to watch, and you watch, and you realize, oh, my God, I had it all wrong. Well, jiu-jitsu is the only martial art where it really works like in the Bruce Lee movie. Yeah. Where the little guy really can beat the big guy. Yeah. I was in Japan. I was with Dean, as a matter of fact, when Nogira submitted Sap. That was a perfect example. Perfect example. But Sap dropped him on his head, pile-drived him on his head. But a small man can tap out a much larger, stronger man on a regular basis. Yeah. It's an amazing... I, I really, really enjoy watching someone go from being a beginning student to being a killer. It's a fascinating process because you're literally watching someone develop their comprehension of a language of fighting. And that language of fighting is analogous to life. It, it, it helps them in every single aspect of their life because it's one of the most difficult things that a person will do in their day. I mean, you walk into a jiu-jitsu school, you're, you park your car, you live in this normal realm of normal people with you know, normal problems and bills and stresses and issues. But once you go into that thing, you put on that gi or no gi or whatever you're doing and you go into that class, once you engage in these sparring sessions, these sparring sessions with skilled practitioners, you're doing one of the most difficult things any person within a hundred mile radius of you is doing. And by doing that on a regular basis and constantly reinforcing this language, it enhances the, all your possibilities and your potential possibilities as a person. Jiu-Jitsu really is one of those things that you can't appreciate what's going on until you do it. My son asked me, hey dad, is there really such a thing as superpowers? And I'm like, jujitsu.
If someone doesn't know how to swim and falls in the deep end of the pool, he's going to die quickly. And it makes no sense, right? I mean, you, if you know how to swim, you look at this and think, he's moving his arms and legs furiously, right? And yet it makes no difference. When you train in jiu-jitsu, you get to be that drowning man. It reflects life. And if the day you start saying that you're good to go, like in a leadership position or whatever task you're working on, the day you say, I've learned everything there is to learn about this, is the day you start to lose. 